Charles and Juventus of Italy, Mike Zimmett, along with Seamus Mallon. And right now, let's head to the field and pick up the public address and production of the Cosmos and Juventus. And now, let's meet the remaining players for both teams. First, Juventus. Goalkeeper, number one, Stefano Tacconi. Defender, number two, Luciano Favero. Defender, number three, Antonio Cabrini. Midfielder, number four, Massimo Bonini. Defender, number five, Sergio Brio. Midfielder, number seven, Bruno Lamido. Midfielder, number eight, Marco Tardelli. Forward, number nine, Paolo Rossi. Forward, number ten, Michel Platini. Number 11, Zabigniew Bonnet. The reserves. Number 12, Luciano Bodini. Number 13, Nicola Caricola. Number 14, Stefano Piuli. Number 15, Claudio Prandelli. Number 16, Giovanni Coetin. And number 17, Aldo Docelli. The head coach of Juventus, Mr. Giovanni Trapattoni. Well, Seamus, as we said, a pretty formative lineup down and on that field. For your Very much so, and the Cosmos are going to have to uh, have their one, best shooting shoes on tonight. Birkenmeyer lost in Minnesota 3-2 to two on Friday night. Very frustrating night on for defense, the Cosmos until the second half. Wearing number 34, Ladislo Zmuda. 82 World Cup Defender, player from Poland. Number 16, Angelo Di Bernardo. Defender, number two, Andronic Eskandarian. Defender, number 22, Pedro De Brito. He scored the opening goal of Midfielder, the Cosmos attack on Friday. Number 13, Johan Neskin. Neskin still just about the most popular Playing player along with Birkenmeyer. And wearing number 33, Rick Davis. Well, listen, Seamus, you know he's been missed. That's right. That may be the biggest cheer of the night. And wearing number 31 this evening, Giuseppe Damiani. At forward, number 12, Steve Moyers. He's back in uniform and after an injury. Number 14, Stan Turlecki. The reserves this evening, number 21, David Bursich. Number 11, Dragan Bojevic. Number 28, Chico Borja. Number 9, Roberto Cabanas. Number 25, Jerry Gray. Number 27, Carmen Marcantonio. Number 30, Mike Fox. And number five, Daryl G, the head coach of the Cosmos, Mr. Eddie Formani. 
And you look at the amount of media on hand too, Seamus, and that's just the photographers the on the field. For tonight's special that's match. That's right. Uh, here referee, we hear the announcement of the Mr. officials. Gilvo Di Placido, the senior linesman, Mr. Jose Reyes, and the junior linesman, Mr. Mike Saunders. The official time is being kept on the field. Referee by the in the middle, official, senior linesman Mr. on the left, Luigi the junior on the right. Macaro. Cosmos in white shirts and Ladies blue and shorts, an unusual kit for them, but uh, Juventus wear white shorts, so uh, it's felt important that Cosmos wear a contrasting color. Now the national anthems of both countries, the United States and Italy. Fratelli d'Italia, l'Italia Del Elmo di Scipio se cinta la testa dove la vittoria le porghe la chioma che schiava di Sia corte, sin pronti alla morte, l'Italia come stringiamoci a corte, sin pronti alla morte, sin pronti alla morte, l'Italia come fratelli d'Italia, l'Italia se desta, vogliamo. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting The Cosmos and Juventus of Italy will be back with the opening tap after this. Mike Zimmett along with Seamus Mallon, the Cosmos and Juventus of Italy, they won the World Cup in 1982. And Seamus, you take a look at the uh, Juventus lineup. Uh, Stefano Tacconi, the goalkeeper, the defense of Pavero, Cabrini, Brito, and Shirea. A look at the midfield, very potent. Bonini, Levito, and Tardelli. And up front for Juventus, Rossi, Platini, and Boniak, an awesome combination up there, Seamus. Oh, yes, indeed. This Juventus side very definitely uh, loaded with power all over the place, especially up front. And uh, while they may not play 4-3-3 the way we sometimes will line them up, nonetheless, you know they're going to be attacking tonight. So I suspect whoever does play in midfield as a fourth player, uh, nonetheless, will be an attacking midfielder. So Juventus will kick off, and we're underway. Quick look at the goalkeepers. You saw Tacconi of Juventus and Birkenmeier.
for the Cosmos. Again, if you just joined us, Juventus wearing the striped shirts, the white shorts, and they are one of the most powerful teams in the world. Number three is Antonio Cabrini. He is a defender, one of the best rated in the world. There's number six, Gaetano Shorea. He plays sweeper for Juventus. Had to do a lot with the position after Franz Beckenbauer made it world famous. Seamus will take a couple of minutes for these teams to feel each other out. Good crowd here at Giant Stadium. Ronini is number four as he moves across. He's bumped by Di Bernardo. There's Damiani, picked up just for this game, number 31. And just look at the tight marking. Cosmos will keep it. Boniek, uh, the number 11 player, listed as a forward, but uh, working out of midfield early on. Rossi and Platini doing some of the front running at the moment. There's Pedro de Brito scored the first goal of the game Friday night, a game the Cosmos lost in regular NASL play to Minnesota, 3-2. to two. For Ricky Davis, first time he's touched the ball as a Cosmo in quite a while. Nice thought to the top of the box, but it's broken up. Here comes Juventus. Number 11 is Boniak. Good play by Di Bernardo with the header, and there's Johan Niskins. Damiani is 31. Giorgio Kinal, your new Cosmos president, also trying to sign Damiani as a full-time player, and you know Giorgio is going to go to work to improve this club. Steve Boyer's back from a leg injury, wearing number 12. Uh, Angelo Di Bernardo, who made that nice clearing header you mentioned, is playing right fullback tonight, and DeBrito on the far side and left back. It's Ruda as sweeper and Eski as stopper. There's Bogey with the kick, and it's knocked out. Michelle Platini, captain of France, moves it down. There's Rossi, very, very dangerous offensive threat. Notice how Juventus works the ball around. That time, not too well. Eskandarian, first touch of the ball tonight. Boy, he played a good second half in Minnesota Friday. Very aggressive, Seamus. Eske is one of those players you have to sort of keep apologizing in your own mind for, for mentioning all the time, but he is so solid, rarely makes a mistake. Uh, was somewhat embarrassed that uh, Godfrey Ingram managed to get inside him and score that uh, important goal, but the Cosmos came back well in that match and then lost it, uh, having established themselves in a tie position and lost it to that tremendous goal by Alan Willey. Uh, first time tonight, the Cosmos are forced to send it back to Birkenmeyer, and Eskandarian will try to go the other way. There's Steve Bernardo. We have a little over 42 minutes to go in this first half. The Cosmos and Juventus of Italy. And we'll get into that team a little more. First whistle of the ball game. Uh, no question, uh, Cabrini coming over there to uh, a dangerous play. Well, the back four, Eski, De Brito, Di Bernardo, and Smuda, a sweeper. The midfield, uh, that's a nice midfield. Naskins, Bogey, and Davis used to be the routine stuff for the Cosmos. Damiani, the new player, Moyers, and Telecki. All right, here's the kick, and it's knocked out. We must mention right now, Seamus, as a goal kick is uh, coming up for Juventus, that Chico Borja, Roberto Cabanas, Jeff Durkin, and Andrew Parkinson still out with injuries, so you know the Cosmos missed them. So they're on the bench tonight, but whether or not that means uh, they will get into action, I'm not sure. We'll just uh, wait and see. This is a game, I think, of unlimited substitution possibilities since it's a non-league match and just an international match, but uh, we'll see how much Eddie wants to use them later on. Juventus looking to move it down again. The Cosmos break it up and a fight for the ball. As Moyers on the collision on the header, Damiani number 31. Visiting the Cosmos for a single night. Giorgio Canalia hopes to make it permanent. Good feet to Di Bernardo and a good thought on the one-touch passing. Good combination work, Damiani there, playing on the right side and seeing uh, that Bogey offered a good target. Angelo read it well and went forward. Angelo will go forward quite Marco a bit tonight, Tardelli. but he'll have to be a little careful of the vaunted counterattack of Juventus. Marco Tardelli, number eight. Cosmos playing very tight up front. Cabrini is number three. He is a defender. There's Lamido, number seven. Nice thought, but it's broken up by the Cosmos, looking very much alive here in the early going, much more so than they did Friday in Minnesota. Damiani cutting across the right wing, looking to set up. There's nobody back. First shot and a save made by Stefano Ciccone. Well, 
shots are good to see. Damiani taking his first shot as a Cosmos player, and the goalkeeper, I think, uh, making a bit of a mistake on it, but we have a quick corner nonetheless. So, so the Cosmos still in control here with Bogey. Looking, here comes Davis on the cutter. Check that, that's Neeskins cutting in. Nice thought by him and a sliding tackle in the box. Uh, they all thought there was a handball there, but it wasn't given, and so the free, free, the free kick is given for pushing. There's Michelle Plotini with plenty of running room. Lamito is number seven on the angle. Marco Tardelli. Juventus keeping it alive. Nice move by Lamito. Di Bernardo there to block it away. Good play by Angelo Di Bernardo. There he goes. Juventus with a corner kick. It'll come out of the left side of your picture. There it goes. Kicked out by Di Bernardo. And Juventus keeps it alive. Ronini is number four. Davis got the body on it and a hard push as Niskins falls down. And we get the whistle. 38 minutes, 35 seconds to go. Let's break for this word. We are scoreless. Well, what you're seeing, Seamus, is a celebration of a goal we hope to pick up in just a second. Well, Moyer is coming back uh, and getting into the play beautifully as the ball was played marvelously into him from Damiani and Naiskins. Watch Naiskins. What a great ball from Naiskins. Beats two players. A fine first touch by Damiani and a fine first touch by the American Moyers, who's been out of the Cosmos uniform for a long time. And look at this good reach in there by Damiani and the quick reaction by Moyers and no chance for Tacconi and the Cosmos surprisingly jump out ahead one to nothing. Seamus, how important is the first goal in this game? Well, I think it's a game that is not going to be ended by one goal. So, <laughs> so relative to under other games, less important, but nonetheless, a good boost for the Cosmos. Eskandarian driving the ball across the goal line, which will make for a Juventus corner. By the way, to straighten things out, it is Italy that won the World Cup in 1982. Several players from this Juventus team were on that Italian club. And a couple who are no longer with them, like uh, Gentile, the tough fullback, despite his name, Gentile. And Dino Zoff, the goalkeeper, of course, no longer playing and was the captain of Italy. Ah, a bullet and a punch by Birkenmeyer as he drills it out. Well, the, the goal by Moyers at 7.30. Naiskins, of course, with one assist and Damiani with the other. So good to see Damiani getting into the score sheet only after seven and a half minutes in a Cosmos uniform. This is not Damiani's first... Uh, appearance in this stadium though Mike he played in the world all-star game and I think that may have created some of the interest in his coming here as Stan Trelucky he's a forward Bogey thought the pass was going to him but it was broken up there, there's dummy inning Warriors getting a head on the ball and tried to send it ahead and did but to call right there Seamus, I did ask Eddie Fermani, how do you deal with the new players, Davis, Zamuda, and Damiani, as far as getting them into the flow? He said, hey, we'll talk to them once and let them play. Yeah. Cabrini, double marked off the ball, but it's picked up by Boniek. He is a Polish player given permission by the Polish government to play for Juventus. There come the Cosmos. Terlecki. Time remaining, 35 minutes in this first half. Cosmos with a one to nothing lead. There's Terlecki breaking down. Back is Shurea. Save made by Taconi, and I'm telling you, the Cosmos are looking pretty potent on offense, Seamus. Well, Damiani made the run to the far post there. I think in the end, Terlecki felt he could get it to him, but he did not reckon on the good reach of Taconi. Here comes Boniak and Rossi. And they have a break going down. Boniak number 11 looking for Rossi, and again, Eskandarian breaking it up nicely. There's Bogey. Bogey taking a second to think as he sends it down. Terlecki is marked by Favero, number two. And it's tackled away. The Cosmos are going to keep the ball. Yeah, corner kick, second of the game so far for the Cosmos, who certainly come out with an in intention of uh, impressing fans here and uh, with a goal 
They have impressed, and with their all-around play, they've looked very sharp. But, but that's often the case against international opponents, although not often this early. Terlecki gets the ball back from Davis, shipping it in front, and Tacconi again is forced to come out. That kind of ball is really not any threat to Tacconi. It's, it's a ball played in high and took a long time to get there, and he's very easily going to be able to thread his way through the players to pick it off. A ball like a cross like that is going to have a little bit more swerve or deceit on it. Here's Patini, who has uh, had only a couple of touches so far. Martini, number 10. Boniek <laughs> screaming at his players to come up. He's right, of course. Rodini, this is Cabrini, number three, sending it in the box and again headed out by the Cosmos defense. Cosmos very up for this game. Here's Lamido, number seven, looking to break in. Slide tackle made. And they're going to have to start over. Cosmos playing good, good defense right here. And they've got to because, as we said earlier, Juventus is a very potent offensive team. You'll give them an inch, and they're going to take advantage. Lamido, number seven. Look, the Cosmos aren't giving them much room to move at all. The team knocked off the ball. Yeah, obstruction call there. Martini had taken a spill on the deck there. He might have even drawn a penalty, but uh, that's the kind of play we expect to see from his fine player, Michel Platini, the Frenchman with the Italian name. All those Frenchmen seem to have non-French names. You look at the national side. Look at this good run by him, uh, taking on two players, and then Zmuda in a good position to sweep, but uh, an indirect free kick now, and I'm sure that Juventus has got uh, some scheme ready for this situation. All right, number three, Cabrini is around the ball. 11 is Boniak. Boniak looking. Here is the shot, and it goes way wide, taken by Marco Tardelli. 31, 43 to go. By the way, this copyright telecast presented by authority of the Cosmos intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and account of this game without the express written consent of the Cosmos and Sports Channel is prohibited. Announcers on this telecast are selected by Sports Channel and approved by the Cosmos. As Di Bernardo has played a solid game so far, Terlecki is number 14. He's a forward. Notice two Juventus players marking Terlecki, not giving him room. And the ball goes over. 31 minutes to go. Cosmos lead one to nothing. We'll be back. Cosmos and Juventus of Italy. We are here live at Giant Stadium. Mike Zimmett along with Seamus Mallon. There is the score. And if you have just joined us, Juventus is the team in the black and white stripes and the white shorts. Juventus, of course, uh, in the black and white, a uh, uniform that they inherited from Nottingham in England well over 80 years ago, but uh, certainly whatever English was in the origin has disappeared very quickly from their style of play. They're very much an Italian team, but uh, they led the league this year, scored 43 points, and were in first place. And of course, won the Cup Winners Cup by beating Porto of Oporto in, in Portugal by two goals to one. And so they will be defending champions in that competition next year. Uh, and uh, European uh, Cup possibilities for them as the champions of Italy. Lamito is number seven. Now the Cosmos waking up defensively and pressing Juventus as they try to come upfield. Shawea is number six. There's Shawea getting the ball back. Dangerous situation right here. The shot and it just goes above the crossbar. Well, a great run by Shirea. Shirea is a sweeper, but that also means Libero. That's Boniek, who got at the end and put it over the top. But a great run by Shirea, who's a free player at the back. Terrific cross. Look at this excellent cross. And really, Boniek, uh, for his skill and talent, perhaps might have done a little bit better with that, although it was not an easy chance. Here's Boniek again. Well, Juventus waking up after a little bit of a slow start. And we get a whistle. Shawea, by the way, in 1981, Seamus, Italy's footballer of the year. You cannot do much better than that. Coming up on 28 minutes to go in this first half. Cosmos with a one to nothing lead over visiting Juventus. They have several World Cup players 
Italy winning the World Cup back in 1982. Ricky Davis having trouble getting on the ball. There's Bogey. And here's Angelo again running into all that space on the right side. Angelo taking his time. Nice spin up front. Nice thought. Trying to get it to, uh, for a quick one touch to Davis and then to Bogey. So it's nice to see some of that combination play returning to the Cosmos, even though there's some unfamiliar players. are not totally unfamiliar, but certainly uh, has not been around for a while. Let me correct one thing. Juventus, of course, will be playing in the Champions Cup next year. Uh, not uh, the Cup Winners' Cup, but they will be playing a, a team called Ilves Tampere from Finland in the first round, September 19th. There's a lead downfield. That is Tardelli. Shoots oh. it and hit the crossbar and goes out. Well, Marco Tardelli, who scored that remarkable goal in the Cup Final, the uh, World Cup Final, Getting into a good position here. And just off the outside of the post. Tardelli playing in two World Cups in 78 and 82. Very experienced player. 26 minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first half. Seamus, uh, we just learned special treat at halftime. We'll be chatting with Giorgio Quinaglia, the new Cosmos president. As Davis, good feed for Moyers, but beat to the soccer ball. Well. Dilvio Di Placido here at uh, Dilvo giving a free kick to the Cosmos, indirect free kick. Uh, the ball really wasn't playable by, by Moyers. He was bumped at the end, but, uh, you know, I think that's the kind of thing most referees would let go, but it was a dramatic bump, and maybe he thought there was more to it than there really was. Now he's got to get the wall back 10 yards. This is indirect, of course, obstruction. There's Bogey on top of the ball. Good shot of Bogey. Probably the premier midfielder in this league. DeBrito is going to look. Wall does its job. I don't think that shot was going to go anywhere near the goal, by the way. It was another one of these outside of the foot numbers that Pedro has far from perfected. There's Eskandarian with a cross. And it's knocked away by Platini. Palorossi. Hasn't touched the ball that much, but should get more into the game as it goes on. There's Rossi. 11 is a big new Broniak. Well, it was raining today. That could be why he fell. 25 minutes, 10 seconds to go in this first half. Cosmos with a one to nothing lead and with the soccer ball. There's Damiani. Taking his time to study the field, and look, he's drawing three Juventus players around him. Ricky Davis, number 33. 34 is Zamudov, World Cup player from Poland. Cosmos are thinking of signing him permanently. Mayskin's there, out hustling Platini. keep the ball. Bogey met right up by number seven, Flamigo, and Juventus has possession. Number four is Ronini. There's Cabrini, his ninth year with the Juventus club. Coming up on 24 minutes to go. As Boniek looks to drive in, beautiful pass in front, saved by Birkenmeyer. But there you saw the gifts of Rossi Ghosting in from nowhere, that's what he's so wonderful at doing, getting between defenders. Maybe he's just so thin that nobody sees him. Well, look at this cross, perfectly weighted between two players. And there he is, getting in the header in and well knocked away by Birkenmeyer. A difficult save for Hubert because that ball was headed towards the line, towards the ground, which is what uh, all the good headers of the ball will do. Not all that powerful, but certainly well directed. Quick free, a quick corner kick taken by Juventus. Looking to set up again. Another shot, this time the defense stops it, and the Cosmos take over. Damiani is 31, but he's in trouble. Rossi again with the ball. And Seamus, you look at the footwork of Rossi, so quick. And Damiani's footwork, uh, maybe not quite as quick that time, taking a gamble, trying to get out of a crowd of players by taking them on, but he felt, I think, that there was no support there for him, and he's given it away again. There's 
to drive this time by Platini goes way wide. The Mets West Coast swing continues and you can follow the quest for the pennant on Sports Channel. This Tuesday, it's a 10.30 p.m. contest versus Tommy Lasota's Dodgers. And on Friday, they roll into Candlestick Park to challenge the Giants at 11. Sports Channel, we've got New York Mets baseball covered. Mets very happy today after a 6-2 win over the Pirates game many of you probably saw on Sports Channel. There's Bogey. Damiani is 31, taking a look at DiBernardo. 22 minutes, 20 seconds to go, first half. Cosmos with the only goal of the soccer game. Good steal by Cabrini. Sixth is Chiara. He is a sweep. Well, Angelo trying to take on Cabrini there and beat him one against one. He's going to require a little bit more uh, pace and deception to do that against the defender of the confidence and experience of Cabrini. So Cabrini quite easily dispossessed him. There's Koniak waving his hand saying, hey guys, where are you? All right, Juventus looking to set up in the box. Here is a header close. And Eskandarian got in a follow-up shot by Cabrini and it goes wide. Well, a good gamble on a shot there by Cabrini. You might argue he should have perhaps have controlled it and shot it, but he's a uh, skillful enough player to be able to, able to track that volley. 21 minutes, 25 seconds to go in this first half. Famous, by the way, this is the third visit to North America in three years for Juventus. They did start their uh, tour here last week against the Toronto Blizzard up in Canada. That's right. It's a successful start to their tour by beating the Blizzard 2-1. Uh, on 21 minutes to go. And again, Juventus in control. That's Paolo Rossi, number nine. Four is Bonini. The crowd with the chant of defense. And Di Bernardo obliges them with a sliding tackle. There's Angelo. Michel Platini, he's 29 years old. And it's kicked out by Zamuda. Well, it may sound like defense, but actually what it is, uh, Mike, is Juve. <laughs> it's the short for Juventus, and that tells you how many Italian fans are here. Because they want uh, Juve, Juve to get going here. But instead, the Cosmos defense has been responding, as you mentioned. Yeah, it also tells you about my hearing. <laughs> a little over 20 minutes to go. Well, they had the crowd picked up a chant before the game, by the way, that was not very complimentary to one of our... Network brethren, ABC, the tune of ABC Sticks went around the stadium. Very modest. And uh, lets them know exactly what they think of the alleged coverage of the Olympics by the ABC, of the soccer Olympics, which is pretty much of a travesty, if you will, with, with 1.5 million people watching and, and uh, virtually no coverage whatsoever. It's a little hard to understand that it's uh, not, nothing more than a deliberate decision not to cover. We're going to pick up more on that Olympics in a second. Got a couple of interesting points to touch on. There's Bonini coming across, but he's met by two Cosmos defenders. Trelucky nearly steals the ball away. It's recaptured by Tardelli, who's going in. A little over 19 minutes to go. Right here, let's step out. We'll be right back. Ten seconds to go, first half. Mike Zimmett and Seamus Mellon from Giant Stadium, Cosmos and Juventus of Italy. An exhibition match exclusively on Sports Channel. Juventus in the striped jerseys. They're bringing it down. Bottini is number 10. Juventus mounting an attack, saved by Birkenmeyer with Shawea just cruising and crunching. And I must say, it, Juventus not really sending as many players forward. Oh, here's a good chance now for Tolecki. They're not doing as much attacking as they expected. Ah, Tolecki running with the ball with some room. Good feet in front! Damiani nearly making it two to nothing, Cosmos. Well, there's the speed of Stan Terlecki using the space well and then releasing it just before he's closed down. Damiani getting the touch in, but had the right corner as the goalkeeper Tacconi was down, but just whipping it by the post. Now here comes the counterattack, and this is Bonini. Well, Damiani has played only one game with the Cosmos. You think he played a lot more the way he's controlling the ball. Very fluid. Latini, number 10. Coming down is Tardelli. Rossi with a header. 
but this one goes wide, and Rossi was marked very well in front. So it'll be a corner for Juventus. A good look at Eskandarian, premier defender. Lamido will take the kick, and it's a very short one. Looking to work it to the top of the box, Ooh. just going over the crossbar again. Well, Cosmos fans, the 84 yearbook is now on sale. The year's, this year's edition includes profiles of all the players, plus a full color feature in the Cosmos contingent of American stars. Get your 84 Cosmos yearbook at Giant Stadium or by mail. Just send $3.50 plus a dollar for postage and handling to Sports Programs, P.O. Box 1984, Union City, New Jersey, 07087. Well, interesting that uh, so many of the opportunities for uh, Juventus have come for, uh, out of heading opportunities, although a couple of good shots by Cabrini as well. So Juventus now beginning to get into the stride of things. They haven't played together that much since the uh, end of the season. So they're showing uh, themselves a little bit rusty uh, in their work around the top of the box. There's Lamido with a cross in front, and it's nicely headed away, but right back to Lamido. Met by Di Bernardo right there. And Angelo protecting the ball well with his body, which will make for a goal kick. Boy, Di Bernardo gives 100% out there, always. Well, you see, he's so versatile in his positional play, too. Now he's back playing right fullback, which is where Eskandarian usually plays. Eskandarian's he's got to go forward to cover up for the Durgan Cantor duo on the injury list. Uh, and uh, so when he's in the middle, they've got to find somebody else to play outside. Can't quite save that one over there, so it'll be... Uh, Throwing Shirea having to run back. Shirea coming forward an awful lot now, which is good news for fans of Juventus and really fans of the game here, because if Shirea comes forward, then there are going to be some more scoring opportunities uh, in the Cosmos end. Just under 15 minutes to go, first half. Cosmos with the only goal of the game. They lead it one to nothing. Pedro de Brito, number 22, and Bogey is going to direct traffic. He's met by Bonini. There's Terlecki, watched by Favero. Ricky Davis, crowd gave him a great ovation when he was introduced. Offside there was uh, Stan Terlecki, and Ricky's uh, feed was a good idea. The execution was not quite uh, on form. Ricky, of course, just coming back from being captain of the U.S. Olympic side out on the West Coast. There's Cabrini. Started his professional career at 16 years of age. Look at the Cosmos defense, sitting up in the box, not giving Juventus an inch. And again, it works as Damiani steals the ball away, and the Cosmos will try to get on the board again. Giuseppe Damiani, number 31. Well, the Cosmos defensive uh, work by their forwards is quite notable tonight. Uh, Terlecki on the far side was right back with the overlapping fullback, and that time uh, Damiani, as the right winger, stripped the ball away from his man. Oh, it's an unusual mistake by Baskins. Downfield is Zbigniew Boniak, and the whistle offside is called with 13.25 to go. And Seamus, obviously not. Well, he's gotten a yellow card for kicking the ball away. He reached his arm around to make that trap. Rather obvious, uh, rather obvious that he used his arm, in fact, to trap the ball. Uh, the flag didn't go up, so I don't think he was offside, but I, we could see down this side that he, that ball was going to skip uh, across his body, and he reached uh, the left arm around, caught the ball on the left arm to drop it at his feet, and the referee saw it. And Boniak was a little ticked off that it was seen, because very often those things aren't seen, especially when they're on the side of your body farther away from the referee. And he kicked the ball towards the referee in disgust. But uh, Di Placido was correct on that decision. Ricky Davis looking to get possession of the ball, could not. Niskins, good kick downfield to alert the Cosmos. They were attacking to lucky number 14. Good feet ahead. Here comes Davis on the wing. And boy, was he pushed hard by Cabrini. I think Cabrini stumbled there. I think he, he stumbled on the turf. He's not really uh, about to do that. Let's see if he does take a trip here. He does, well, he shoves. He certainly had the elbow in the back, but that's routine procedure for most wing defenders. But he did lose his footing. I think he, st he stubbed his toe there on the where there is some extra... Green, whoops, here's a shot. No, Damiani isn't getting it. There's an extra artificial surface laid down there to cover the end zone in football. 
It's a slight seam there. I think he's, he stubbed his toe. Sheamus, Wednesday night at 9 p.m. The Cosmos try to sock it to San Diego in NASL action. Live right here from Giant Stadium, only on Sports Channel, your home for a super summer of sports. Wednesday at 9 o'clock. All right, Juventus coming down in a hurry. Dangerous mistake. Well, Smuda found that ball very difficult to handle as it came fast off the turf into him. Uh, looked like he just wanted to thump it away and he couldn't quite get to it. But good work by, again, Angelo Di Bernardo coming up and saving the day. I'll tell you, Seamus, uh, Smuda playing in Europe cannot be too familiar with Astro Turf, and that has to bother him a little bit. Yeah, especially with the way the ball skids, I think. Here's the corner kick now. This should be a dangerous end swinger, probably towards Bonnier. Header in front to Brito, knocking it away from Brio number five. But a good chance for Tardelli, who must be a little unhappy that he didn't do a better job with that corner kick. Tardelli not marked very well by the Cosmos defense, and at the moment he's still quite open there near the penalty spot. Maybe Rick Davis will keep a closer eye on him this time. All right, here it comes again. Curling one and Birkenmeyer saying hello to the ball. 11 minutes exactly to go, first half. Remember at halftime, Seamus will be chatting with the new president of the Cosmos, Giorgio Quinalia. Cosmos looking, there's Rossi playing some defense against Bogey. And Rossi all over him, not giving Bogey an inch. Brito looking ahead for Damiani. Good feed. Moyers. He is double marked. Now three men coming over. Damiani looking downfield and a shot save made by Tacconi, and he has gotten some work out tonight. Uh, a good touch by Damiani. Threw originally to Moyers, who tried to watch that ball as it was spinning over his head, over his shoulder into place. Unfortunately, he mistrapped it or sort of fell behind him. He had to come back for it. Otherwise, he might have had a good chance to run on to. Lamido working against Di Bernardo, firing one, this one wide, above the crossbar. Seamus, while we have a second, you mentioned uh, ABC and the Olympics. Last night, if you think soccer is dying in this country, forget about it. Nearly 102,000 people at the Rose Bowl to see France beat Brazil 2 to nothing on two second-half goals by France. That's right. I'm proud to say I was one of those 101,700 people that night. It was a great occasion. It was very heartening. And I'll tell you, all those fans were not Brazilians and French. They were most of them just red-blooded Americans there to see some international uh, soccer, and they loved every minute of it. There was a good uh, contingent of Brazilians, of course, a good contingent of French, but primarily it was uh, a lot of Californians. There's Bogey coming down, looking to make it 2-0. Feet to the top of the box. Moyers could not control. And Juventus takes over. Uh, Bogey hurt there a little bit by some of the runs his teammates made. They all cut in towards the middle, and of course that made the defensive job that much easier for Juventus. Uh, and Terlecki in particular perhaps should have stood, uh, stayed a lot further wide left there to have pulled a defender out and given a little chance for Bogey to squeeze the ball through. Di Bernardo with a good feed. Boy, he's all over the field. And the whistle, because Di Bernardo made that tackle and the push. No time wasted by Juventus. Roni Bonini is number four. Angelo right there again. And Di Bernardo saying no harm done. Uh, referee doesn't buy it. He gives a yellow card. <laughs> Angelo saying, I think they made a mistake, Seamus. Well, we'll see the tackle here. He does get a foot on the ball, but uh, he also got the man around the ankles before getting to the ball just a second before so and uh, that of course makes it makes it a foul Angelo now uh, trying to block the shot across Lamito with the curling shot too high and Terlecki taking over as the Cosmos come down on the counter Terlecki in a race along with Bonian He's doing it all downfield. Terlecki now beaten to it by Boniek and uh, wraps the arms around Boniek's body. Well, two former Polish national players there on a 70-yard sprint. <laughs> and uh, Terlecki really had the beating of him. And then he stumbled a bit just as he pushed the ball by him and uh, lost his stride. And, of course, that's enough to, to uh, give the edge back to the defender. 7.50 to go. First half, Cosmos one, Juventus nothing. There's Tardelli, number eight. 
our tackling midfielder. Birkenmeyer cradling the ball. Well, the announcement coming over, as you said, Seamus, Steve Bernardo issued a yellow card. Several World Cup Italian players on this Juventus club. You're watching some of the best players in the world. You want to know how much money these people make, Seamus? Uh, some of these guys on Juventus making 400, 500 thousand a year. They are not. Uh, they don't come cheap, even over in Europe. All right, here comes Rossi. Seamus, if I'm not mistaken, Rossi has not gotten his foot on the ball that much this game. No. Right, no. Uh, right here, we're going to break for this timeout. We'll be right back. Seamus Mellon at Giant Stadium. Hard collision between Bogey and Cabrini. Cosmos come down. Damiani is number 31. Good split by him. Well, they're going to call obstruction again here as uh, Damiani... Did a good job splitting the defensive cutting inside, then was nudged off the ball as he, or nudged as he tried to follow onto the ball. And uh, let's see if we can see it again. There you see the bump. Yeah, pretty obvious one, I think. But once again, the kind of thing that the referee might have judged that he never would have gotten to catch up with it anyhow. So the bump really doesn't matter that much. But uh, not so, says uh, De Placido. Indirect free kick um, for the Cosmos, just outside the penalty area. And we're pretty close to halftime. About four, about five minutes to go before halftime. And look at where Tacconi, the goalkeeper, is all the way on the right side of your screen. Now he splits across. Ogie and Davis around the ball. This is Torlecki driving one, but just wide. I think it is touch wide, though. It'll be a corner kick. Cosmos leading by one goal. And that goal by Moyers after a terrific little touch in by Damiani. And they've certainly had some good chances, but so have uh, Juventus had good chances. Corner kick, Pedro de Brito going over for this corner kick, along with Terlecki, and they take it quickly. Terlecki setting up some nice plays from the left side. Ricky Davis trying to split through, this time could not. Coming up on the counter is Ponian, and his jersey was Brad. Refs say play on. There's the Brito man who did it. Now they're going to hold it up for a second. Yeah, that was a free kick. 3.50 to go. First half. Cosmos won. Juventus nothing. Juventus looking to set up. Boniak number 11. Here's the bullet. And again goes sailing wide. Yeah, but that'll be a corner kick too. A deflection in there. Boniak not comfortable. Something bothering him from that challenge uh, by Debrito where Debrito pulled his, tried to pull his shirt off his back. By the way, I want to remind you of a rescheduled game, the Sunday, July 29th game that was supposed to be at the Golden Bay has been rescheduled to Wednesday, September 12th at 9 p.m. There's Lamito, number seven, with the ball against Bogey, feet in front. A couple of players fell down. Yeah, Tardelli uh, knocked over by Rick Davis. Uh, lucky not to give a penalty away there. Here's Damiani. Damiani doing it himself with a little bit of running room. Now he's going to get rid of it. Trelecki picks it up. Trelecki cruising top of the penalty area. A little too much footwork for Davis right back. 2.35 to go, first half. Niskins. And Di Bernardo looks to set up. Bogey working his magic. Damiani trying to feed Boyers a little too deep, and it's knocked away. Here comes Lamito. 2.15 to go. First half, 1-0 Cosmos leading Juventus. Well, Favero will never get to that one. Uh, it's the kind of ball that holds up a bit on natural grass, but certainly not an artificial field, and one that's wet and crowned to boot. It just runs away from you very frustratingly, and of course, that's hurt Juventus a couple of times. Paolo Rossi has fallen over a few times with some good chances, so he may want to think about the kinds of uh, shoes he's got on at halftime, maybe make a change since he's simply not getting a good enough grip on the surface. A minute 45 to go. Again, this is an AstroTurf surface. It is wet because of the drizzle and the little rain they've had today. 
which makes it a lot worse for the players and the soccer ball. A minute and a half to go. DeBrito, his jersey pulled from behind. Good feet ahead. Terlecki is the oncoming forward. And it's a cross, a run in with Favero. Remember at halftime, stay tuned, Seamus with Giorgio Quinalia. That match I mentioned, the reschedule, that was, uh, of course, the Golden Bay Earthquakes Cosmos game was canceled because of the Olympics or postponed. But it will be here the 12th of September at 9 p.m. kickoff, and the tickets for July 29th will be on to September 12th. There's a block. <laughs> Vladislav Zamuda saying, yep, I know I did it. Platini, number 10. Here comes Tardelli. Tardelli watched by Davis. Good marking by Davis, not giving Tardelli any room at the goal line. Ricky Davis signed to a 30-day contract by the Cosmos management. They're looking to get him back full-time. Half minute to go. First half, 1-0 Cosmos. Here's the corner. Niskins heads it down. Platini, number 10. A feed in front and bogey. Good defense right there. Well, Bogey, smart, he's looking around to see where Rossi was, because Rossi is the one who pops up in those situations. Unfortunately for them, he popped up offside, and the flag went up for offside, but Rossi is the kind of player who just simply has got that great instinct for finding the space in the defense and getting in there quickly. And this half is over. That Cosmos fans have got to be happy. Good defensive half for them, but they have gotten the goal on the board. They lead it at the end of the half. One to nothing over Juventus. Seamus and I will be back to chat. And stay tuned for Giorgio Quinalia's interview all coming up. The score at the half, the Cosmos won. And James, making it the most watched event by uh, fee-paying or entrance-paying people. And even the free television deems it not worthy of coverage. Uh, that uh, is a little hard to swallow because the fans have showed with their feet that uh, they certainly are going to go and watch it when it's uh, played at an exciting level. And I think that's one of the things the league has to do, Mike. They've, we're now down to a sufficient number of small number of teams. There's been very few change in the teams that they maybe are a little bit too familiar with people and they need a little bit of novelty. And here's a novelty in and of itself. <laughs> Cabana's coming on as a reserve to play the number nine shirt. Uh, as Moyers has gone to the bench, having done a good job in the first half. And uh, Cabanas has missed the last couple of games, Seamus, because of a foot injury. And he is going to add some offense to this club. We are underway, second half. Johan Niskins. And uh, Prandelli has come in on the right side of midfield, and we'll see who they've taken out at the moment. I do not see Massimo Bonini in there. But uh, no announcement has been made yet, So, but it looks to me like Bonini has gone off and uh, Prandelli has come on. And he is number 15, Claudio Prandelli, a midfielder. His pro career began at 17, and Seamus, another of the many World Cup players on this event, a squad. And there's Rossi on Eski as he tries to move the ball up. And Juventus marking more closely than they have towards the end of the first half. There's Di Bernardo. Cabanas wearing number nine. And Juventus now looking to set up. First couple of minutes of play in the second half. Cosmos lead it by the score of one to nothing on a goal by Steve Moyers. A race for the ball downfield. Good feet in front. And Niskins again, good position in the box. Sharea keeps it alive. He's number six. This is Boniak, number 11. Cabanas making his presence felt, knocking the ball away. Terlecki now in a battle. And Terlecki all over the place and steals the ball. It's recaptured by Sergio Brio, number five. Well, a lot of play going on around midfield, Seamus. Yes, well, Cabana's getting some touches on the ball. None of them are really that impressive so far, though, but he's got to go a little deeper. Well, here's the announcement of substitution, Prandelli. He replaces number seven. Well, Limido is the one who came out. Uh, yes, that's right, number four still is in there. The Limido came out, Bonini is still in. Our Cosmos are looking to come down. Stan Terlecki against Favero. Terlecki keeping the ball alive, although he is double marked. A little too far for Davis Funk. 
handball there on Naiskins as he tried to block the quick counterattack. Good look at Naiskins. Had an assist on the first goal. Game which the Cosmos lead one to nothing. Look for this game to open up in a little bit. As Seamus said earlier, you highly doubt it's going to stay one to nothing at the end of this match. Nice thought by a Platini on the outside. And uh, Naiskins with good sportsmanship, just making sure he's okay. Well, they are friends, too. Platini and Naiskins uh, greeting each other before the match uh, warmly. They're old friends and respect each other a great deal. Platini, on, on that particular move there, was trying to touch the ball through and then run on to get a, a return ball back from Boniek. Uh, but, uh, of course, Boniek never got to it, and Platini was upended. Uh, let's see what Juventus does. This is Favero, number two. He winds the curler, and it goes wide. Zamuda, Di Bernardo, and De Brito, three defenders for the Cosmos who were back to bust up the play. And Platini, the one uh, getting over there in a kind of uh, Paolo Rossi-like position, ghosting in there behind uh, Shirea, and, uh, who had beaten Zamuda for the jump, but the header by Platini off the mark. Platini scored a number of goals uh, with his head uh, in, in Spain for the French national team as they went on to win the world I mean, the European Championship. Big year for France. Big year. Winning the Olympic gold medal and the European Championship. And in that uh, European Cup, he scored nine goals. All right, here's Rossi, and the angle cut down by Birkenmeyer, and the crowd responds. Good effort by Boniek, and there you see Hubert, who read that very well and couldn't wait for that one. Had to come out for it and smothered it nicely. 40 minutes, 40 seconds to go. In the second half, 1-0 Cosmos. Again, if you just joined us, Juventus of Italy in the black and white striped tops. And that is Damiani, who was down, looks to be his left ankle. And uh, Bogey waving, and John Bruno, new trainer, coming out to take a look. Cabrini coming in very hard here. You see him just getting his legs in between both of... Uh, the legs of Damiani, and he goes down in quite a bit of pain. A very dangerous tackle by Cabrini, and I should think somewhat unnecessary. Get a look at that man and hope to see a bit more of him in Cosmos uniform. He's done very well so far. He's okay. He's on the ball now. As Di Bernardo looking for Terlecki, who has marked off the ball nicely by Favero, and it goes out. Good position by Luciano Favero, number two, blocking that ball away. Well, the Cosmos had nine shots, as we mentioned in the first half, of which four came from uh, Damiani alone. 39 and a half to go, second half. All right, here's the new man, Prandellian, for Juventus. Bottini is number 10. Good feed ahead. Beautiful feed. And a score. Claudio Prandelli ties the game at one apiece. Well, it's superb finishing by Prandelli, but what a great piece of work between Boniek uh, and Platini. I don't know if we'll go back far enough on this to be able to see the terrific touch by Boniek to give the ball to Platini in the first place before he fed Prandelli. Well, here it is now. Watch uh, Platini putting it right through the defense. And the hand goes up for offside from De Brito, but not to be, and beats the goalkeeper easily and tucks it in for the time goal. But believe me, before Platini got this ball, Boniek made a great touch to him. And there's Prandelli beating the defense, getting it away marvelously from Birkenmeyer, keeping his cool, not losing his balance on the dangerous AstroTurf, which uh, seems to be such a problem to them. But uh, no problem during that time, so we're tied at one, not surprisingly. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, Seamus, how long you think the game is going to keep at 1-0? And I didn't even have time to. All right, it's a new game. A little over 39 minutes to go, and now the clock is not moving, Seamus. Something they're going to have to fix. Clock is not moving, but play is. Here's Stan Trelecki looking to move in. Good cross oh. in front. Oh, but right to Damiani, right yeah. yeah. Cabrini was right there to touch it away, but Damiani was in a terrific position just beyond him and would have definitely had the go-ahead goal there. Fine cross by Terlecki. Here's uh, Cabanas now. Feet in front for Davis, but he's beaten to it. Shorea heads the ball away. 
Well, the official assist have gone to Latini and the Boniek, and that's appropriate because Boniek was the one who made that difficult pass to Platini first, and he made the good uh, through ball to beat the defense. Stan Terlecki cruising top of the penalty area as Bogey. Notice he waits. He is in no hurry, but looks to set up. That goal came, by the way, at five minutes and 50 seconds into the into the second half. 50-50 in the game. Here comes Boniek. Or the man of speedy. Boniek against Eskandarian. Looking to cross it for Platini. And Niskins beats him to the ball. The speed of Niskins, too, must be admired. There's Cabanas wearing Canalia's own num old number nine. 38 minutes exactly to go, second half. Tied up at one apiece. Ball intended for Cabanas, but he never had a chance. This is Terlecki. Look, three people up on bogey. And Seamus Juventus playing more aggressively than in the first half, that's for sure. Well, they're certainly sending more players to the ball carrier, trying to, to win it back. And that's given the Cosmos some trouble in midfield. There's Terlecki with a steal, but a handball, allegedly. I mean, apparently, then there's not much doubt about it in the referee's mind or in the Juventus players' minds. You may now be getting to look uh, a little bit more like what their fans expect of them. Here's Cabrini. Juventus looking to set up. Ball midfield, and it's picked up again by Tardelli. Spinning kick, and it goes wide. A curler by Boniek to score. One apiece, Juventus and the Cosmos will be back. Angelo Di Bernardo cruising from out deep. Ball came a couple of yards away from the left side of the Juventus net, defended by Stefano Tacconi. And apparently a corner kick to be given here. The, another substitution, Paolo Rossi has gone out. And uh, Coetting has come in this place. There he is, Giovanni Coetting. He is a forward, replacing Paolo Rossi. All right, here come the Cosmos again. Bogey, nice move to Damiani. Damiani still following the ball. Nice attempt by Damiani. He has seen a lot of ball action, and uh, this is considering he's making his first appearance in a Cosmo uniform for the night. Although Canalia is trying to sign him full time. 34 minutes, 50 seconds to go, and the Cosmos continue to work the pressure on Juventus. Seamus, why do you think Rossi is out? Oh, I think he's played, you know, a good 60 to 55 minutes or so. He's given his. Uh Appearance. He's pleased some of the fans. Uh, he's not been as sharp, perhaps, as he might. He should have had one goal on the header. But uh, the coach of the game like this wants to give a lot of players a chance to play. There's Coetting, new man in. Nice steal by Niskins. Giuseppe Damiani, number 31. He has a one on four. Well, he's un unhappy there that he lost the ball, obviously, but he's also unhappy that Cabanas didn't come to him to play uh, some combination play instead of going away from him into a crowd of defenders. Uh, Niskins again taking that ball away from Michelle Platini. Platini, uh, another World Cup player, led France to a fourth place finish in 82. That is the year Italy won the Cup, and many of those Italian World Cup players are here tonight. Good hand for Damiani as he comes out. Uh, Giuseppe Damiani has had a good Cosmos debut. He'll be replaced now by Dragan Vujovic, number 11, a well-known uh, player to Cosmos fans for this season, both indoor and outdoor. Very solid performance by Damiani, Seamus. Yes, I think uh, very encouraging indeed. He's got, uh, he's got some pace down the right side. He's got some very good skill on the ball. He's got a tremendously advanced and mature playing sense. Uh, he's played a number of years in Milan, of course, so that shouldn't be a surprise. But he'll add a kind of an, an experience to the front line, the attacking line of the Cosmos, um, as they make uh, their rush for the playoffs uh, on the assumption that Canalia can sign him. And I was speaking to uh, Pepe Pinton, number one executive under Canalia. He is planning to do a lot of work signing these players this week. 
Here's Vujovic, number 11, new man in. Good footwork by Vujovic as he looks to split through. He wants to do it all alone and nearly does. Good drive by Dragon Vujovic. Well, by the way, there's another big international match coming up. Argentina Juniors are playing the Cosmos Wednesday, August 22nd. It's an 8 p.m. game. And uh, tickets for that game is for all games are on sale at Meadowlands Arena, the box office, and Ticketron, Charge It, Teletron, and Charge a Seat are by mail through the Cosmos Ticket Office, 75 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York. Tricky ball, and it goes right across. Just to repeat that address for you, uh, 75 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10019, the Cosmos Ticket Office, and of course at the stadium the day of the game. And that's so we hope to see you coming out for the Argentina Juniors game and of course for the next game, the 15th against San Diego. Poniak with the corner, curled a little too short. It was intended for Antonio Cabrini, but he never saw the ball. Cosmo's looking to work up a good threat ahead for Escandarian. This is Cabanas, and Esky looks to take the return. There's Escandarian with the ball. He's a defender. Headed out. Here's Vojevic with a driving shot, but it goes wide. Break here, let's break the score. One up, we'll be right back. The East Rutherford exhibition soccer between the Cosmos and Juventus of Italy. And that's the score. One apiece. Warriors with a goal at 7.30 of the first half. And Juventus tied it up. Claudio Prandelli nodding the score early in the second half. Seamus, what do you see from here on in as far as the attacking part of the game goes? Well, I think these players are obviously not going to be able to keep up uh, a lot of aggressive play because they're uh, going to fade a bit. There is a case in point, a bad throw, throw from Prandelli that Boniak just simply wasn't able to get to. But, the, but Zmuda and company may also have some trouble. Here's Zmuda going forward for the first time in the game. Vojevic, who just put on that good drive before the commercial. Vojevic trying to oh. do it again. Beautiful thought, though. Almost getting it through to bogey. Uh, definitely uh, very much the midfield aggressive leader tonight, trying to get uh, back the old style of Cosmos play that seems to have slipped away from him in recent games. Boniek is 11, 16 is Koenig. Came in for Rossi a few minutes ago. As Tardelli scored the game tying goal, picked up by Davis, but in a dangerous position. There's Eskandarian, and uh, you said it. These guys cannot keep up that pace, Seamus, because they are looking to slow down a little bit. 28 minutes, 50 seconds to go, second half. There are lots of reserves, however, who can come in and uh, give some freshness to each team. Cabrini, number eight, is Tardelli. Looking downfield for Coetting, but it never got to him. Pedro de Brito, number 22, he is marked by Coetting, the new man in. This is Vojevic. Nice footwork by Vojevic. Let's see what he does up at midfield. Bogey connecting for Vojevic. Cosmos have three men down. They must watch the offsides. There's Di Bernardo. Vojevic directing traffic. Bogey with a one touch. Stan Terlecki with the ball. Cosmos working it around extremely well as Di Bernardo looks to split down. Telecki at the goal line. Nice thought for Cabanas, but somebody's foot got in the way. Well, Shirea's foot, and Shirea, of course, a very experienced sweeper, knew exactly what position to take up there as that ball was going to come back. And Cosmos win it in midfield again. Boy, they're getting that ball into Juventus territory a lot during the second half. There's Ricky Davis, has been playing with the St. Louis Steamers of the MISL, and he is tripped. Uh, Tardelli uh, there with the foul. Tardelli coming in and obviously uh, trying to reach around and touch that ball away, but knocking Davis over first. More Yankee action comes your way tomorrow as the Bombers take to the diamond for a 7 p.m. clash with the Indians. Catch their climb up the American League East ladder on Sports Channel, the home of the home teams. All right, there's Bogey for the kick. Save made an easy one. By Tacone. Just under 27 minutes to go in the match. One apiece. Cosmo scoring in the first half. Juventus tying the game a little while ago. 
is Platini. Everywhere Platini goes, Naiskins goes with him. You can see them just uh, tracking out of the screen there. Obviously, that's been a very uh, clear one-on-one -on -one situation. The others have not been quite so clear. Here comes Tartelli, but uh, he'll lose it. Eski has had not quite the same kind of man-marking assignment uh, tonight in the last 10 minutes. Well, he was looking after Paolo Rossi earlier, which is not easy to do because Rossi hides uh, very well. Uh, here's Ricky Davis loping across to midfield. Stan Terlecki taking a second to see who's downfield. Finds Cavanius, who is upended. Roberto Cavanius has missed the last couple of games because of an injury, did not play on Friday in Minnesota. That was an NASL regulation game. Cosmos lost to the Strikers 3-2. Another Juventus player warming up as the ball comes back to Bogey. See what Bogey does. Terlecki takes the ball about 30 yards out, and he fires one high and wide. We'll be back in just a moment. Here we are at Giant Stadium, and that's what you're watching. Cosmos soccer and the score tied up at one apiece. It's been a good match, Seamus. Referee putting another name in the book, by the way. Uh, this of uh, Brio, Sergio Brio, for a second hard foul on Cabanas, this time with the elbow up and around the face. Line is not really looking sharp so far. His touches uh, have not been very good. His passing just simply not on the mark. He hasn't played very much in recent weeks, so he's got to get his uh, playing fitness back again. Now he's on the ball. Took it away from Boniak, number 11. There's Bogey. Vojevic, who has been strong since coming out as a sub a few minutes ago, but could do nothing that time. A little over 24 minutes to go. In the second half, Cosmos and Juventus of Italy tied at one apiece. There's Bonia coming down. Check that that's Panini. Nice cross, Platini, but Niskins beat him to it on the header. That would be a corner kick here. Good effort there to get that cross in indeed, and uh, Niskins, as I said, the shadow of Platini. Greeted him before the game, uh, may have said, uh, I'll be seeing a lot of you uh, for the next 90 minutes. And Bettini may be regretting that greeting uh, now because he certainly has been taken out of the game by and large by the good marking of Johan Neskens. Neskens has played a solid defensive game. Yep. Oh, here's a shot. Ooh, just right. went wide. That was Bettini getting away from Neskens. Of course, he got away from Neskens long enough a few minutes ago to put a nice ball in through to beat the defense, including particularly to beat De Brito, who could not uh, keep track of his man 15, Prendelli, for the tying goal. So uh, I wouldn't say that, uh, that Platini has been totally out of the game, but certainly in the close-in challenges, Naiskins has done the job. Under 23 minutes to go, second half, tied up at one apiece. Mike Zimmett, along with Seamus Mallon, this is an exclusive on Sports Channel. There's Cavanius again trying the impossible and losing it, but the Cosmos win it back. Dragan Vujovic. <clears throat> nice balance by him and takes a couple of bumps, keeps on going. Ricky Davis trying to step in, and Niskins gets it back. Too deep a pass. Cavanius could not chase it down all the way. Well, he took a couple of bumps, as you mentioned. He also dished out a bump that the Juventus fans thought maybe ought to have been Call back. Uh, let's see him getting away from one. Now we see a little left left shoulder charge by him here. Watch Prendelli go flying. <laughs> yes, uh, the carefully tutored elbow of Mr. Vujovic as we come back live. Davis knocking the ball away as Juventus attempted to get it in the box. It's a corner for Juventus. Giovanni Coetting, number 16. He is a forward. Will take over. Number four is Massimo Panini. A wedding marked by Di Bernardo. Beautiful feed in front to Boniek, but you heard the whistle. Offside, but just barely offside as Boniek uh, just slipped in behind the defense. It's a good touch. Look at this going right through the defense with Boniek only a pace or two. He was offside easily when he got the ball, but just uh, half a step at the moment the ball is released. So a close uh, shave there for the Cosmos who are tied 1-1 with the Italian champions Juventus. And once again, uh, Cavagna's trying a difficult thing, loses it. Platini with a good pass ahead for Boniak. 
Oniak given problems. And a driving shot by Tardelli. And I'm telling you, Seamus, Juventus now putting more and more offensive pressure on the Cosmos as the game winds down. Well, look, there's uh, Tardelli who gets a good chance to score here. Just gets under a little bit too much. It's carefully watched over the top by Hubert. A lot of the Cosmos troubles are becoming are becoming, the, coming now because they're losing the ball in midfield a lot, and primarily because Cabana simply is trying uh, ridiculous kinds of one-on-one -on -one things when he should be just giving the ball away and going for the return pass. Here's Tabrito. Number 22, and it's knocked off. Sliding tackle by oh. Neeskins. Neeskins challenging every ball played out there. Neskin's having a very solid match, I should think, uh, probably the leading candidate as far as the Cosmos are concerned for the Getty player of the game. Angel Di Bernardo had a very good first half, but so far I think uh, definitely Neskin's has uh, been the outstanding player for the Cosmos. 20 minutes exactly to go in the second half, tied up at one apiece. If you've just joined us, this is the Cosmos against Juventus of Italy featuring several World Cup players. Juventus in the striped jerseys wearing black and white. Angelo Di Bernardo, midfielder for the Cosmos. He has given his heart out in this game. Bogey is number eight. Bogey doesn't run. He lopes across the field, but does it so well. There's Ricky Davis. He's going to take it. Davis showing, yes, I have returned to the New York, New Jersey area. Almost, uh, almost finding that upper corner. Naskins is going to come out now. Jerry Gray will come in to replace him for as a substitute. So uh, we have uh, 19 minutes to go, and Naskins has getting a very warm round of applause, as indeed he should. Platini uh, applauding, of course, too. <laughs> Probably delighted to see him go. But Platini himself may be uh, not in the match for much longer. Uh, we'll see. I know that Tardelli is going to be coming off shortly for a substitute. And that's good to see some of these up-and-coming uh, Juventus players, as well as the seasoned veterans, as we're tied at one apiece with 19 minutes to go in this match. There will be no extra time, of course. If it's tied at the end, uh, that will be it. Massimo Panini, number four. He's a defender looking to bring it down. And Angelo Di Bernardo all over the place, enabling the Cosmos to steal it away. But Boniak takes it right back. Terlecki fights with him. Getting a little physical out there. Bottini looking to get his foot on the ball. Could not. Now the shot. And it is blocked well by the Cosmos defense. The Cosmos played that sequence very well defensively. Yeah. And the crowd, how nice to hear that. The crowd applauding. Good passing, good work by defenders, including Bogey coming back to help out. A little example of uh, Bogey's sensational footwork. Control of the ball, too. There's Amuda, number 34. Jerry Gray, the new man in. Cabanas trying to get the ball, could not. And the whistle. Yeah. Once again, Tardelli making his last move of the game as they're trying to get him out of the match. And I think he will be going out of the match right now. But uh, see if the referee will allow it. Yes, they are bringing a substitution on for Marco Tardelli, who is leaving. Marco Tardelli going off the field by the goal area right now. He's going past his own goal post and going off the field. And here is the new player coming in. And we'll get his name for you shortly as soon as we pick up his number. Looked to me like it was uh, Caricola. Number 13, but I'm not sure. Yes, you're right. He's a defender. Seamus, you're talking about seeing the younger uh, players, Caricola. Uh, known as one of the most promising young players in all of Italian soccer. These guys make their presence felt very early in life. The uh, Cosmos uh, got some play going on here. Torlecki oh. and a punch save made by Tacconi. And a corner kick for the Cosmos. A little fake there as they ran over the ball, maybe hoping to draw the a player off the wall and give a chance for the shooter to come through and bend it around there. but. Tony was well placed and did the smart thing instead of trying to catch it, just punch it away. Dragan Vujovic with the corner, and it's headed out nicely by Sergio Brio, who is uh, playing with the yellow card. Cosmo's looking to come right back down. Debrito, number 22, off the feed. There's Escandarian, hasn't seen much of the ball lately. Crossing, perfect position by Juventus defense. 
Michel Plantini, dangerous back heel kick, and it does turn into a steal. Just under 15 minutes to go, second half, Cosmos and Juventus tied up at one apiece in an exhibition game. There comes Vojevic again. This time, Mark Doyle over, has nowhere to go. He has triple marked off the ball, and he is kicked by Antonio Cabrini, and that's why Vojevic is down, and there's Cabrini number three. Well, the Juventus player is getting a little bit impatient with some of the hijinks of Mr. Vojevic, and that was a really pretty vicious tackle by Cabrini. The second one he's come up with, I would have thought that might have been almost a second yellow for him. He would have been out. But uh, let's see if Dragan recovers. Seems to be okay, getting to his feet slowly, but uh, now he's okay. Bogey over the ball. Davis to his left. Bogey taking a second to set it up. DeBrito tried the header, but could not get it on it. Here's Cabanas with a rolling shot. No problem for Tacconi. By the way, fans, the Cosmos offer generous discount for groups 25 or more. Raise funds for your group's worthwhile cause and enjoy yourself at a Cosmos game all at the same time. For details, call the Cosmos group sales at 212-265-8600. Good header at midfield, enabling this play to take place. Stan Terlecki with a high loping ball in the air. Cabanas with the header. Vojevic tried to get it, could not. This is Ricky Davis. Vojevic taking the return, waving Davis over. That time the play was busted up nicely. We repeat the number for group sales for you, 212-265-8600. Uh, so get your group to come out the Cosmos. Uh, the old Cosmos are on the way back. And it's good to see a very, very uh, encouraging crowd here tonight on a fairly gloomy day. It's been that way all season long. The Cosmos have had no luck uh, from Mother Nature whatsoever. It rain uh, virtually almost every home game, but uh, tonight a uh, very good crowd coming out. Looks kind of like England, Seamus, with the mist hanging over here. Juventus looking. This is Plotini, number 10. Davis tried to slide tackle the way, a turning shot and a nice one, but it went a little bit wide. A little over 12 minutes to go, tied up at one, and we'll be right back. Close coming downfield, a little over 11 minutes to go. Here's Pedro de Brito. Could not control the ball and is given problems. Dragan Vujovic, number 11. Very powerfully built forward. Ricky Davis has been playing with the St. Louis Steamers of the MISL, but expect to have him sign to a full-time Cosmos contract any time now. Davis in the box, look to get position. Again, if you missed it earlier, he was signed to a 30-day contract by Giorgio Quinalia, looking to bring the crowds back to Giant Stadium. As Vojevic given problems, Debrito looking to work it ahead, but Boniak all over him, not giving him an inch. Again, as Seamus mentioned a couple of minutes ago, in case we are tied at the end of regulation, that is it. There is no overtime in this exhibition match. There's Davis, Eskandaria number two. Good move by Eski. Has Vojevic right in the middle. Tried to feed him, but he did not break in, was wary of the offsides. The steal by Davis. But a handball by Ricky as he came through to try to win it. Good idea to challenge there because it was a difficult ball for the defender to trap and it was worth the challenge. And they almost uh, gave it away there and again. Uh, that time as uh, Caricola almost gave it up to number 14 for the Cosmos. There, Stan Terlecki, who had some good runs in the first half, but has been very quiet, not been heard much from in the second half at all as the Cosmos offense has sort of uh, come apart a little bit. 9.35 to go in the match. One apiece. It has been an entertaining game for the many thousands of people who have shown up tonight. Di Bernardo and Cabrini both fall down. Is he going to get out of this game, Seamus? It's going to be a penalty. Well, that is very ironic because Cabrini has done his share of knocking people around and finally he has tripped uh, well, it was Jerry Gray or whoever it was knocking him over, but the referee is given a penalty kick as two Cosmos players collapsed on him and knocked him over. But uh, Angelo Di Bernardo is the other player. 
I, I wasn't sure that it was really tripped. I thought he stubbed his toe and went down, but we'll, maybe we'll be able to see. But certainly, uh, you could argue he was pushed. And here's the push, there's a touch. Well, he certainly lost his footing and went down before the challenge. It might have been a touch from Jerry Gray behind him. We're going to try to take uh, yet another angle of it. Let's take a look at Jerry Gray and see if he does. Yeah, Jerry Gray just gives him a little flick uh, on the uh, outside of his left foot, and that was sufficient to take him down. And Seamus, if you notice, uh, Di Bernardo's right foot came out from under him. Okay, it's going to be Boniek with a penalty kick. This should be a piece of cake for Boniek to put Juventus ahead 2-1 with only nine minutes to go in the game. Boniek against Birkenmeyer. He's just waiting for the signal to shoot the ball. Water bottles on the field at this point. It's a very, very humid night. All right, now Boniek is ready to step to the ball. Here he comes. Saved made by Birkenmeyer denying Boniek of the goal. And the Cosmos love it. Great save by Eskandarian's roommate as he went over to congratulate him. Guess right. Several Juventus players, by the way, went into the penalty area early, so I think goal would not have been allowed or should not have been allowed to have been scored. But it's academic as the Cosmos uh, breathe a sigh of relief and they got some time left now to go ahead and uh, see if they can get a goal. Watch a slight move. Oh, yes, and, uh, more than a slight move, but they tend to let those moves go. Not a well-hit ball by Boniek. Here comes Cabanas. I was going to ask you, Seamus, and I'll ask it in a second as the Cosmos look to penetrate right through. Here is Tulecki, a feet in front, nobody top of the box. Oh, of the my sets. goodness. Tulecki did so well to get around two players and then gave it up. Uh, he's sort of looking around in despair, but he passed it out to uh, the Juventus player, not, a, not, the, not somebody of his teammates. Here comes Favero. Good feet in front, punched away by Birkenmeyer. Favero does not quit. He's number two. Curls it in the box. What I was going to ask you, Seamus, is should Boniak have done anything different on that kick? Well, yeah, he should have put it in the net. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Besides that. <laughs> he, hit the right, he hit the ball well. He hit it towards the post, but not... Uh, with enough pace, and he, I guess he telegraphed it a little bit because Hubert certainly um, you uh, seem to know exactly what was going to happen. Here's Vojevic, number 11. He's a forward. Good feet in front. Bogey tripped up. They're going to look for a penalty, okay. and they get it. Well, now it's the Cosmos' turn, and uh, you see that smirk on Bogey saying to Vojevic, yep, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is a little suspect, I think. I don't know, there was a bit of a push in there for sure, but when there's a penalty, Bogey going after it, we'll see the defender leaning into him. But once again, the ball is gone and safely in the hands of the goalkeeper, and then Bogey is knocked over. There was really no chance for him to make it, catch up with that one. And uh, that's the third time that uh, the referee has called a call where players have been knocked down, Cosmos has been knocked down after the ball was up beyond their reach where things are let go. But in any case, we're going to have some substitutions. Uh, Borja comes in for Terlecki. And D Di Bernardo will be coming out and Daryl G coming in. Well, it was nice to see some of the uh, walking wounded back. Borja missed a couple of games because uh, his feet were not too good. Naiskins, of course, is the Cosmos penalty taker uh, after Mr. Canalia has gone off to uh, the boardroom. And uh, he's no longer around. So Ricky Davis, well, here's a touch of irony. Ricky Davis is going to have a chance to uh, endear himself to Meadowlands fans. A look at Stefano Tacconi, goalkeeper for Juventus. Man has to concentrate now. The game is on the line. Just 5.37 to go in the match. We are tied up at one apiece. The play of the game, Hubert Birkenmeyer denying. It's a big deal, Boniak, of a penalty shot just a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> Well, nothing like a little uh, controversy to set the blood uh, running through Italian veins. Well, my guess is it's pumping pretty hard right now because fans have come out to cheer Juventus are not happy with this turn of events, but let's see what Ricky Davis, the American, can do. Notice Ciccone crouched down as Davis steps in. Now the shot. Score! Uh, Ricky 
got that one uh, perilously high, which is uh, often not the advised way to take penalties. But you can't argue with success as he knew exactly what to do. Look at him hitting it high to the goalkeeper's right. And uh, of course the keeper tends to move and tends to move low. And that makes the high shot perhaps a reasonable possibility. Here's another angle. Players going into the area early. Look at how early they're in. Much too early. That, that, had that been saved, it might have been called back because all those players were in the penalty area before the shot was taken. And a steal at midfield. You've got to believe Davis after the goal said, hey, it's good to be back home. 4.48 to go in the match. Cosmos take the lead on a score by Ricky Davis. It is 2-1. Cosmos, the steal by Vujovic, and you heard the whistle. Yeah, that Caricolo was floor. So Rick Davis, uh, not a bad choice there, but rather a nice choice to take the penalty. He's going to be, uh, oh, here's a good piece of work by Juventus. They're looking again. The Cosmos defense denies Juventus of going into that penalty area. Well, if you're going to give a guy a penalty in a big situation, give it to a guy in a 30-day contract. He's going to be gone in 30 days, but we hope not. 36,724 showing up at Giant Stadium wow, tonight. That's very heartening indeed. In fact, maybe the best crowd of the season, if I remember correctly. 354 to go. And uh, another big international match coming up. I mentioned Argentina Junior is coming in August 22nd. The Cosmos take them on at 8 p.m. that night. They have Olkin, Vidal, Batista, and Renato Corsi was born in Manhattan. So that's going to be Latin night. Special free game halftime event celebrating Latin culture. The Cosmos Argentina Juniors, Wednesday, August 22nd, 8 p.m. All right, right here, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Jameis Mellon, Giant Stadium. There is the time and counting till the Cosmos win. And uh, I would think not many people thought the Cosmos would beat a team full of World Cup players, but they look to do it right here, Seamus. Yeah, the uh, event is not uh, really in, in season form yet. I mean, this is a sort of pre-season event, early pre-season event for them. But they did win in Toronto, so they meant business on this road trip, uh, this very far distant road trip. Ooh, a dangerous pass there by Vojevic has given it right back to Juve, so this thing isn't over yet. A recall on number 13, a look for Poniak downfield, but knocked away by DeBrito. Well, coming back on the plane from Minnesota, I asked Eddie Fermani what kind of uh, play you think the Cosmos are going to do, and he said, you better believe they're going to be ready for this one. Good feet on the floor by Karikola, but it's just stopped by the foot of Bogey. Vojevic after the ball, he's number 11. This is Chico Borja back from the injury list, running with Bogey downfield. A minute 20 to go in the match. A little too deep. Well... Cabanas did a uh, reasonably smart thing that time in the sense that he let it go through his legs, but there's going to be a, a card issued here, a red card. A red card issued here to, I think, to Chico Borja and uh, number 15, Prandelli, both, it seems, for... Uh, having a bit of a dispute after the ball. So no question that Prandelli was chasing Chico. Chico gets about three dribbles on the ball, and all of a sudden he's gone for an early shower. He hardly worked up a sweat. But they were battling each other after the ball was played away by uh, Borja over towards Cabanas. They were kicking at each other and eventually swung at each other, and then the referee saw it and sent them both off. So we're down to 10 players, uh, a team with uh, 57 seconds to go, but the stadium clock it's not official, and I would suspect there's probably more time on it because there were a lot of stoppages for substitutions while that clock was running. Well, Borja will not have to wash his uniform for Wednesday's game. He was not on the field long enough to break a sweat. All right, Juventus looking downfield. Platini, top of the box. Dangerous situation here as Coetting is tripped up. Juventus keeping it alive. Platini, beautiful steal by Gray on the pickoff. 25 seconds showing on the stadium clock. Two on the score, the go-ahead goal, possibly the game winner by Ricky Davis on a penalty kick. Down to 13 seconds on the stadium clock. We'll see if that's official or not. And look at the defense of the Cosmos. Uh, Juventus having trouble getting the ball on the playing field. Three seconds to go. This is Favero with one last try. Time has run down. And that appears to be a Seamus, so the Cosmos 
in a mild upset have beat the Juventus of Italy, even though it is an exhibition game. The final score, the Cosmos 2. And Juventus won the game-winning goal. Ricky Davis on a penalty kick late in the second half. Another key play, of course, just a minute earlier, Boniak being denied. And going into the center circle is our player of the game. Uh, with his uh, warm-up on, you see Frattini being greeted by, just on the left of your screen there, he was in there briefly, was uh, Naiskins. There, there's Naiskins in the middle of your screen there. That's Johan Naiskins with his warm-up jacket on, or Borja's warm-up jacket on. Johan, our player of the game, and the fans giving a good round of applause to an appreciative Cosmos team, appreciative for a good crowd tonight of over almost 37,000, and a good performance by the Cosmos. Maybe getting a bit of a break on the penalty call, but certainly Ricky Davis coming back with a tremendous return to Giant Stadium, and the Cosmos etching another chapter in their history of international success in the Giant Stadium, two to one over the European, over the Italian champions Juventus. And look at the hugging between uh, Boniek and Terlecki. We'll be back for a recap in just a moment. Final again, the Cosmos 2, Juventus of Italy 1. We'll be back. Only 2-1, to one, a game which saw, if anything, entertaining soccer on both ends. Very good game, I think, uh, for the Cosmos to win because uh, a lot of people felt that they were on a bit of a mild slump, that their players simply weren't giving the kind of productive efforts that Cosmos players have in the past. And then I think this team feels that they've uh, gotten a bit of a bad rap in that way. And so they wanted to do something tonight. They had some new players who made a very good start, uh, some a restart in the case of Ricky Davis. But uh, I think that Platini in particular showed some wonderful touches around the box. I think he was worth the price of admission. He's such a skillful player. And I would go anywhere really to watch Michel Platini play. It was really very much at the top of his game now after his European triumph of last month. And what really surprised me, Seamus, was the fact that the three new Cosmos player, one who was in so new, Ricky Davis, got along with the teammates so well. And I'm talking about Damiani, Zamuda, and Ricky Davis. They seem to flow so well, even though they've been here for less than a couple of days. Yeah, well, of course, Zamuda uh, probably has the least difficult task. He's just a sweeper but he's supposed to direct things, and of course that's 